Hey, Fit Church family, and welcome to Church Online today. We weren't expecting to be completely online today, but God had bigger plans. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. It's great to see you. Great to have you with us. Hey, while you uh, watch this today, and uh, we just ask, you, as always, leave your prayer request down below so that we can pray for you during this service. Uh, and we would love to know if God is moving in your life, uh, please share that with somebody before the end of this service. Yeah, keep us updated with what's going on with you guys. We'll talk to everybody soon. Uh, we hope to see you on Wednesday night for Recharge and Edge Groups. And it looks like the forecast for next week is 53 degrees with sunshine on Sunday. Praise the Lord. So Amen. anyway, we hope you enjoyed this worship service. And God
Hey, Fit Church, and happy Valentine's Day to you, wherever you are. Today, we're starting a brand new three-week sermon series that we're calling Relationships by Design. And the subtitle is God's Design for Relationships. You know, February is known as the month of love, and it's that month where we all get just a little weird, especially around today, Valentine's Day. You know, guys like me who would normally never uh, buy flowers or chocolates, we end up at Walmart or in the Hallmark store, and we try our best to be romantic when the truth is we really have no idea what we're doing. We're just kind of hoping for the best. You know, it's that month where, ladies, where you pretend that you really don't want anything for Valentine's Day. But we know if we don't get you something, that things get real tense real fast. And love is funny like that. Love will make you do things that you normally would never do. And you all probably know what I'm going to say now, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Love can make you do some crazy things. But if love is all we need... Why do relationships have to be so hard? That's a great question, uh, and it's one that for the next three weeks we're going to tackle, we're going to dive into, because I want us all to figure out how to have amazing, Christ-centered relationships with the ones that we love the most. So let's figure out how to have a relationship by design and not by accident. Today we're going to start in Genesis chapter number 2 and we'll look at verses 18 through 24 first. So let's dive right in. And the Lord God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air. And he brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and he closed up the flesh in its place. And then the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And with that, God created the very first human relationship. It wasn't by accident. It had nothing to do with luck, and he created it by his design. And we know that whatever God designs, he does so with perfection in mind. And I'll be honest with you. I don't believe in coincidences, and I don't believe in luck. I believe that everything happens for a reason, and everything happens uh, in God's good time, and God knows the reason before it ever happens. For me, as an example, I believe that it's not by luck and it's not by coincidence that Jamie and I are married today. He took a girl that was born in Durham, who moved to Allensville, North Carolina, and a boy from good old Bushy Fork, and he put them together. And we're always together. Our whole relationship, we've loved spending time together. We've never wanted to be apart. You know, in our being together, we, we have two beautiful children that I believe was completely by God's design. And now that our children are older, Jamie and I are back together again, just doing things and living life and and just enjoying what God has given us. And what I know for sure is that it was God's design to make our relationship a reality. And so it should be our desire to base our relationship around his design. So let's answer the question, what is God's design for a relationship? As Jackson said last week, you might want to write this down. So go ahead and grab a pen or paper or something or make a note in your Bible. Number one is this, in every relationship, you must put Jesus first 
no matter what. Let me say it again. You must put Jesus first no matter what. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 36 through 38, Jesus is asked um, a question by a lawyer who is also a Pharisee. And in case you don't know, a Pharisee was a very self-righteous person. And they believed that they were superior because they were extremely strict in following the Jewish laws, or at least so they claimed. But they were also known as hypocrites because they talked a better game than they actually lived. So pay attention to how Jesus answers this Pharisee's question. The Pharisee says this, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. So what did Jesus say? He said, you shall love God first. Why? Because he said that's the greatest commandment. It's not the greatest suggestion. It's not the greatest theory. It's a commandment. It's the most important thing that you and I will ever do. So how do you apply that to your relationships today? Well, that's simple. Before you can truly love anyone else, you must love God first. So how do we show our love to God? Let me show you. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse number 6, Jesus is talking to one of his disciples named Thomas. And Thomas is a lot like you and he's a lot like me. He had questions. He even had uh, his share of doubts. But I've learned in my life that the best way to overcome your doubts is to ask good questions questions. So Thomas says to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one, watch this, no one comes to the Father except, in other words, this is the only way this is possible. It's God's grand design. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is also God's design for relationships. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. You have to put him first in your life, first in your marriage, first in your dating for my singles out there today. If you ever want to have the blessings of God, the father. Now, the problem is most people want to try and change God's design. As a custom home builder, I have this challenge all the time. An architect will design a home and everyone will initially just agree that it's the most awesome thing they've ever seen. It's their dream home. But then soon after construction starts, the customer or the builder sometimes will start to question the design. And then they start to make changes. But here's the problem with that. Changes always create unforeseen complications. Let me say that again. Changes always create unforeseen complications. And when you and I start to tamper with God's design for our lives and for our relationships, inevitably complications start to arise. You see, anytime you move Jesus from the center, the most important position in a relationship, you're setting that relationship up for complications and even possibly failure. So what do we have to do? The answer is this. You have to put Jesus first, no matter what, which leads me to number two. Number two is this. In God's design for relationships, you worship God, not each other. You worship God, not each other. Let me unpack what I mean by that. So often we get wrapped up in our own love story that we miss the bigger story. When we worship each other, we move God from his rightful place and we insert ourselves in a place where we don't belong. And this is not good because as you know, if you've ever tried this, a square peg will not fit in a round hole. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, verse number 25. He says, they traded the truth about God for a lie. 
So they worshiped and served the things that God created instead of the creator himself, who is worthy of eternal praise. And then he says, amen, which means that's right. And as amazing as creation is, it will never measure up to the creator. Somewhere along the way, what God created started to get more attention than God himself. And a lot of times relationships fail because we start to worship the person who we are in love with instead of worshiping God who brought us together. The problem with that is this. When that person that you worship lets you down, you start to look at that person differently. Instead of showing them unconditional love, now we have conditioned judgment. We start to look for flaws. They start to really jump off at us. We start to analyze and assess behavior that we don't like. And the way to combat that is to not worship each other, but to worship God together. And that leads me to number three. God's design for relationships is to worship God together. As a unit, as, as earlier we read in Genesis, a, a husband and a wife, a man and a woman brought together to worship God together. Listen to the words of Paul in uh, Colossians chapter three, verse number 16. He says, let the word of, of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. That was the New King James Version. Now listen how the New Living Translation says it. Let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom uh, he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. Paul says, with thankful hearts. We should be singing to God. We should be living our lives together for God. You know, whether you are married to the love of your life or you're dating and just trying to find the love of your life, God's design for your relationship is to worship Him together. You know, over the years that Jamie and I and my family that we've been in ministry, we've had the opportunity to talk to so many couples and to walk along with so many couples in their relationships through the ups and the, the downs. And while most of them have made it in their relationships so far, there's been quite a few who have not. And I would be honest with you when I tell you this, that most of the time when someone asks me as a pastor, will I perform their wedding ceremony? A lot of times, if not most of the time, my answer is no. Now, don't get mad at me for saying that. Um, It's not that I'm trying to be rude when I say no. And it's not that I don't care about you getting married. Honestly, this is my thought process right here. When someone from outside of our church family calls me and asks to marry them, the first question I ask is always this. Why isn't your pastor marrying you? And the answer I usually get is, well, um, uh, um, uh, well, we, we really haven't found a church that suits our needs yet. Or maybe this is a good one. Uh, we've just been super busy, you know, with life, um, jobs, with school and traveling sports and binge watching Netflix on Sunday mornings and Wednesday nights. You know, those are the only days and times when we have time to just sit down and relax for a minute. And I get what you're saying, because I used to be a whole lot like you, if that's your story. But if I can be honest with you, I didn't like me then and I didn't know it then, but I know it now. I was far from God then. I just didn't know it, and no one thought to tell me. So usually about two minutes into the conversation, I've heard about all I need to hear. And because here's the deal. If you don't have time in your life for God now, then you don't have time to have a relationship by God's design. And you need to know this about me. This is just my heart to you today. 
I feel like when I stand with you on your wedding day or walk with you in your relationship that I am also responsible to God because I am leading you in Christian marriage vows. And for me, if you don't love the church, which, by the way, is the bride of Christ, then I can't stand before God and commit your relationship to him for you. That's something that only you can do. But I'll tell you this, if you're willing to base your relationship on God's design, if you will surrender your life to service for the kingdom of God, then I promise you, not only will I stand with you, this church will stand with you. These people will stand with you. Uh, and when the church, we know this to be true, we've seen it over the ages. When the church stands together, the church grows stronger. And when the church grows stronger, relationships are built around God and they last longer. I will tell you, I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for my bride, for Jamie, for loving me unconditionally. She has so many reasons that she could judge me, but she don't. Or if she does, she doesn't tell me. But I wouldn't be who I am today if, if it wasn't for her and if it wasn't for the church. I wanted you to know today that Jesus died for the church. And I'm grateful to be part of a church that loves Jesus, who would base their life on his design and build their relationships on his grand design. For you today, wherever you are, whenever you may watch this message, this is the challenge. Will you base your relationships around God's design? Because the alternative is you base it around something that may never work, that may fail, around a person who may let you down. But when husbands, when you find your wife, wives, when you find your husband, my people who are out there who are dating, if you want your marriage to last, if you want your relationship to last, it can't be about what you want. It has to be about what God wants for you. So wherever you are today, let me just pray for you. God, I lift up every person who's watching today. And I lift up their relationship because, Lord, we're all in a relationship of some sort. Most of all, I lift up everybody's relationship with your son, Jesus, today. That they would make worship in Jesus. They would make the love of Jesus a number one priority in their lives, no matter what. And I pray, God, that, that we would all come together to worship you in one accord, in spirit and in truth. That we would give our lives over to you. That we would surrender to your grand design for our life. God, the, the plans of man may fail, but we know that the plans that you have for us will stand the test of time. And here is your plan, and I hope you get this today. God's plan for humans, for mankind, for Adam, for Eve, has been redemption by the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you will come to know that in your life today, if you will simply just ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins, he's already surrendered his life for you. He has promised that he would do that. And when he does that, your relationship with God is restored. And more than any relationship today, that's the one we need to focus on the most. So I pray over you today that you would just call out on God. And allow him to move in your life like never before. I know today is Valentine's Day, but there is no love greater than God's love for you. In Jesus' name, I pray over you today. Everybody said amen and amen. God bless you. We'll see you in the next service.
Inside of my chest, I don't. 